Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night service here at New Fellowship Full Gospel Church in Manville, Tennessee. Looking for a great time in the Lord's house tonight. We've got a lot to pray about. God's really been moving. And you know what? He, what he did Sunday, he did Sunday. But you know what? He's, he can still do it today. Yes. Yes. Nothing that God can't do. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. God, we pray, God, in heaven, we come down in glory with the soul. God, we pray, God, for this house tonight. God, we pray, God, at the unction of the anointing of the Holy Ghost to breathe upon this place. God, I pray for all those prayer requests. God, those, Lord God, that may be in the hospital, God, that you would remove them off that bed of affliction. God, those that are at home sick, God, you see the need, God, because it's not by might nor by power, but God, it's by thy spirit. Says the Lord of hosts, Lord, I love you and I praise you and I thank you for, for what you're doing tonight, God, and I thank you for what you're going to do, God. Father, the praise, the honor, and the glory, God, goes to you because without you, we're nothing, God. Father, we give you praise and honor the glory. God, I pray for those watching out there across the airways. God, I pray for the unction of the anointing and the Holy Ghost will breathe upon them. God, move on them. God, touch them, heal them, deliver them, whatever they need may be, Father. God, it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Praise God, praise God. It's good to be in God's house tonight. Amen. Francis, you feel like singing? Yeah. Come on. I look up 
I'm thankful I live by myself, and and uh, God is so good. Yeah, and you know, the devil will try to put things in your mind when you're asleep. Yeah. And I don't know if he ever does that to you, but he does sometimes to me. And I get up and I go through the prayer and I say, God, you are the ruler of this house. Amen. You are here for me. I don't have to think any of those bad things. I love God. He yeah. is my everything. Yeah. And I thought when I, when I got saved, that was the song I went to the altar. Uh, he is my everything. That's not what I'm saying. I love it too much.
our souls to go all the way. We need to be willing, Brother Sam, to go all the way. It's not hard. All you have to do is pray and ask God to help you. That's all you have to do. Amen. Enjoy that singing tonight. Thank you. Too much. Too much. Bailey now. Church, I was praying yesterday. I actually thought I was going to preach one thing. I thought I was going to finish up the message on growing. But that's probably going to come Sunday. I also got another one that God laid on my heart. Invite somebody to come Sunday. There's, I know God's got something great for Sunday, but he's got something for us tonight. I was praying and asking God, what do we need? And he brought me to the scripture that's a very familiar passage of scripture. But you know, every time you read something, God shows you something yes. different. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speak to you tonight if the Lord's willing on power. If we ever needed power, it's now. Amen. The things that we're facing, the things that we're going through, the things that are taking place in this world, we need power. But I'm going to share it with you why we don't have power too. Because he, he tells the disciples just exactly what's happening today. The same thing is happening. We say we want power with God, but we ain't willing to do what it takes to get power with God. Amen. So if you have your Bibles tonight, go with me to the book of John. Big John. Big John chapter 14. I'm just going to read three verses. There's a lot of power in these three verses. And not only there's a lot of power to get to these three verses, you've got to do the first 11 verses. John chapter 14. Stand with me. We're going to read three verses. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he who believeth on me, the work that I do shall ye do also. Amen. And greater works than these shall ye do because I go to my Father. Yes, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I give. Will I, excuse me, will I do. Yes. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I what? Will do it. You understand that? I will do it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you and I praise you for your many blessings. God, I thank you, Father God, most of all, pursuing your only begotten Son, that we could have life and have it more abundantly. God, I thank you for the singing we had in here tonight, God, and I pray, God, that heaven would come down and glory would fill us so. God, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice, sir. And God, I thank you for all that you've done. God, I thank you for all that you're going to do. God, and note this word tonight, God. Let it go out and touch the hearts and the minds of the people, God. And Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory, Father. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You've got to understand something. We all want power with God. We all want this and we all want that. Amen. But are we willing to do what it takes yes. to get what we ask from God? Go back in the first part of this chapter. If you go back to verse number one, everybody, a lot of people can quote the first couple of verses here in chapter 14. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Why he said this passage of Scripture, you've got to go back to the chapter before that in chapter 13. The last part of chapter 13 is where Peter, 
and he and him had a little discussion. And Peter denied him. Just like we do a lot of times in our walk with God. We've all denied Christ. We've all let God down. And if you haven't let him down, then you better raise your hand because I... We all fall short of the glory yes, of God yes, sometimes. Yes, yes. We're all not perfect. We're all striving to do what he, he wants us to do. But you go down, down a little bit further in the passage of Scripture. Verse number 3 says, And I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and, and receive unto you myself, that where I am, that you may be also. What are we striving for? Where he's at right now, that we're striving to get there. And are we willing to do what it takes to get there? How about then you go to verse number four and he says, Where I go, you know, and the way you know. Listen to that right there. Listen. And where I go, and the way you know. But listen to the, what Thomas said. And this is a lot of the church today. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where you go. Yeah. We talk about loving God, and we're talking about we're wanting to be as close to God as we can, but a lot of times we ain't willing to ask God, what do you want me to do, Lord? I know you want me to do this, but Lord, I don't think I can do it. Well, you're doubting yourself before you even start. Hallelujah, Lord of God. But if God says, I want you to do this, or I want you to do that, if you just be a willing vessel, don't argue with him and just do it. God can do more on your behalf than anything else. Hallelujah. But a lot of times we're like old Thomas here. What does he say? Lord, said to him, we know not where you go. And listen, and how can we know the way? The way. What's that sound like today? The church as a whole. We want to go to heaven. We want to do the things that God wants us to do, but we want to do it on our terms instead of what Jesus says to do. But look what Jesus answered. Jesus comes right back at him. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is he saying where Jesus is proclaiming right here? There's no other way, hallelujah, except who I am, what I am. He says, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. If you want to make it to heaven, you got to know who he is. you got to know what he is. And you've got to understand what he is about. What is he about? And it says, no man come to the Father but by, but by me. But I want you to listen. Look at verse number 7. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. Think about that passage of Scripture right there. We say we love God, but do we really know who He is? On our, what kind of relationship do we have with Him every day? Because if you know who He is, if you talk to Him every day, you communicate with Him, He'll lead you and He'll guide you and He'll direct you. He'll let you know what He wants you to do. He'll let you know. What he's talking about here now, if he would have just learned, a lot of times we'll take this word and do it, read it in the flesh. And we'll try to live by the flesh with this. It ain't going to happen. You gotta read this. You gotta understand this in the spirit to be able to because the Bible says, Hallelujah, glory to God, we gotta serve him in spirit and in truth. Listen, the Bible says your flesh can't please God. I don't care how hard you try. But if we get in the spiritual realm, and we start seeking God and praising God. And doing the things that God wants us to do. Hallelujah, glory. And really know who He is. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know why the, the 
church as a whole is in the shape that it's in today is because uh, half the church don't know who he is. Uh, they don't have no power. Uh, they let anything go on. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. But if we can learn to trust him uh, and believe in him uh, and stand on what the word of God says uh, and follow what he says, everything you got to take care of everything else. Amen. Talking to the Lord this week. And I don't know how you talk to him, but I just talk to Brother Rick just like I'm talking to you. Yes. I don't have no big fancy, I don't know them big fancy words, <laughs> but I know how to talk to him yes. as a father. He's my father. Amen. And I said, Lord, all I'm asking is just to have the wisdom to lead your people. I'm not worried about the wealth. I'm not worried about anything else. God, if I can just lead the people in the right direction. Yes. Not steer them off to the left or steer them off to the right. But Lord, the Lord to sure teach me how to lead them up and guide them in the way that you want them to go. And I know God, everything else will take care of itself. But we've got to be listening. And we've got to be listening and saying, God, should speak to me that I know what you would have me to do. Show me the direction that you would have me to go. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's doing a work here at this church. God's doing and something miraculous at this work, at this church. How do you know it? Because the devil's stirred up every which way he can. Then God says, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And we can learn to come together and work out of one accord and trust in him and believe in him and walk the way he says to walk. Amen. 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 If you had to know me, and you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him, and you have seen him. When one truly sees Jesus, we truly see who the father is, oh, yes. and how they work together. Amen. Amen. They work together between the father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And if we can learn to get in with them and God the way God wants it to be, not the way we want it, but God the way you want it to be. Bless you, Lord. When I first took over this church two years ago this month, first last week had been two years. I've invited people that I thought, man, alive. That would be a great fit for this church. Being honest with you tonight, church. God said, that ain't them. I'd invite other people to come to church. God said, that ain't them. And one by one, God starts sending them in. I said, my Lord. Who are you sending in here? And, uh, my, Annie was here Sunday, wrap her and Ralph been coming. And I, we've known man for years. Molly grew up with Annie. And she said, Sam, if you was here last Sunday morning and heard the testimony of these people that joined the church, you'd understand what I'm about to say. He says, you know why you and Molly can deal with a lot of different people that a lot of people can't? I said, why? You know? She said, me, why? And she says, you know how to be, deal with the broken heart because you've been broken hearted yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to listen last Sunday morning mm -hmm. to the people that's testified mm -hmm. about where they came from. Yes. What they used to be. Yes. How heartbroken they was. How beaten down they was. And God reached down out of the lowery clay and set upon them on the rock. And he established their goal. And he says, I've got something that you can do. Let me show you something. People say, there ain't a God that God can't do that. I watched my Sunday morning. God changed people's lives. God broke the chains off of people. God delivered people. And God knows how to 
does have to do that. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But listen to what verse 8. Listen to this. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and then show us. Us. Listen. And this is where I go back to the church. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so wrong with you? And they didn't know. How many people confess to be Christians, but they don't know anything about God, about the Word, about how to come up against the enemy, come to against them. They don't know what to do. They have a form of godliness, but they don't have no power. Church, it's time to get back to the basics. It's time to get back to fasting and praying. It's seeking God and doing the things that God says to do. Think about that. Have I been so long with you and yet you have not known me? Philip? Think about that. Why does the church today have no power? several people, but I'm not quit praying. Because yeah. where there's breath, there's hope. Yeah. But if we would just listen and say, God, I don't want to know who you are. Yes. Amen. I just don't want to talk about it. I don't want it just to speak it out of my mouth. But I want to know that here. Yes. I want him. I want to know that here in my in my ticker who he is. I want to know when I walk out these doors, glory to God. If somebody asks me, do I know who he is? I can say yes, I do. I'm not just speaking it out of my mouth, but I've had a relationship with him. I've had a walk with him. I've had a talk with him. I know who he is. I know where he brought me out of. I know. 
know where I used to be. I know where I'm at today. I, I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't take nothing from a journey from who I've been through or what I went through. And it ain't been easy, but God's never let me hear that with me. I know what he is. That's why there's no power in the church anymore. Hallelujah. What do you mean? When I say that, let me tell you what I mean. That a sinner can come in and sit in God's house and don't get upset. Mm-hmm. Don't shake. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When I was in church, I hated to go when I was lost. <laughs> I'd be going in there and sitting down, and my Lord, I think that preacher was sitting at my table, yes. <laughs> my house, know what was going on in my life. Because every time I'd go, he'd get up and start preaching. Mm-hmm. And I'd start shaking and I'd start crying. And oh, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm praying. Now. I'm praying that God will give us the, the anointing to be so strong in here that how do, when they walk in the door, if they're lost, either they're going to have to run out that door or they're going to have to run to the altar. Yes. I don't want them to be just lukewarm or just. Uh, Busy, busy. I want it to be so powerful, so strong, the glory to God, whether it's in the singing or the preaching, that the anointing is in there, glory to God, yes. glory to God, I got to do something, I'm going, to, I'm going to pass out, I'm going to do something, what you need to do is run to an old-fashioned altar yes. and give your heart to God, yes. and God will change you, he'll take the old man and deny that, he'll give you a new change, yes. he'll make you a new creature in Christ, he'll, he'll change the way you Talk, you change the way you walk. shall he do also the greater works think about that now yeah. shall we do Rick because he's gone to the Father right. greater things what are you talking about preacher he raised the dead he healed the sick yes. he 
he opened the blinded eyes. Think about that. Greater things we can do yes. if we believe. preacher yesterday, me and Sister Molly was visiting. Brother's dead now. He got a Memphis, Tennessee. And he's preaching on about it. When Jesus went in the desert to do something, he kicked the doubters out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Come on. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. When he was going in <laughs> to, to raise this young lady, the already damsel was dead. We walked into the house and all the mourners, and if you could study that back in those days, they used to hire mourners when somebody died to come to their house to cry and whine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came in, he kicked them out. Oh, yes. Now listen to me. You think you're close with God, he only took two of his disciples, the rest of them told to stay out. Yes, he did. That's right. Because they wasn't strong enough to go in there. To him, the two disciples and the mom and dad, and they went into the they went into the chamber. Yes. Because he kept telling them, she's just asleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, she's dead. Yeah. She's asleep. She's asleep. And what happened? Uh -huh. When the doubt was gone, the unbelief was gone. Yes. And when the anointing came, mm -hmm. she rose up. Yes. Yes. Mm, come on. Yeah, come on. Yes. She rose up. Yes, she did. Yes. What's wrong with us today? He said, greater things we should do. Yes, come on. Yes, amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Greater things that we should do. I have people say, oh, glory, I won't, I won't. I always, I was doing what you can do. No, you don't. Everybody wants to start up here. Yeah. You can't fight the little demons down here. How are you gonna fight the little big, big demons up here? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You know how it works. When you get saved, listen to me, I'm going to come to a close. When you get saved, you have faith and you have doubt. As your faith starts to increase, your doubt should go down. Mm -hmm. Amen. The closer you get to God, the stronger your faith ought to become. Yes. Come on. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it's right here. One day your doubt will be up, and the next day your faith will be up. Come on. Your doubt will be up, and your faith will be up. Yeah. Who do you, you press the torch? Who are you trusting in? You want to have faith? What's the Bible say? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You don't know how long I prayed for God. I want faith. And that's wrong. Hey, you do that? Yes. Yes. That's what I believe. He said, you can have as much faith as you want. How much do you believe this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. And hearing by the word of God. Yeah. So you say you want power of God. What are you doing about it? <laughs> Think about it. Folks, when God does something to you, there's going to be a change. Yes. Yes. Something's got to happen. Yes. Yes. If you've truly been changed, you don't want to go back. No, no, never. Right. You don't want to. Oh, don't get me wrong, the devil every day or every two or three days says, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but God says, I got you. You may try to stumble. 
church is when something's wrong in their life. Yes. That's right. I, that's not a relationship. Yeah. That's kind of begging God to help me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If you could have a relationship with him every day, you probably wouldn't be in the situation that you're in right now. Yes. Yes. So stand with me. You ever get complacent? 
where you're at with God, Amen. go over to the book of, I believe it's Proverbs. No, I'm sorry, excuse me. Song of Solomon. And he'll tell you about being stale and stinking. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm not satisfied with where I'm at with God because I'm going forward. Yeah. Yeah. I want more. Yeah. I want to see this church. This church is growing. Yes. Tremendously. Yeah. Spiritually, physically, financially, this church is growing. God's a moving in a mighty way in this place. That's why I keep challenging. I invite people to come. We had visitors again last Sunday. I think the last three or four Sundays we've had visitors. About every service, every Sunday, and some of them's coming back. So let me ask you tonight, those that are listening out there across the airway, what's it going to take for you to get back where God wants you to be? I don't want God to have to put you on the bed and look up. Well, you can walk, come, come on and back into God's house. Yes, sir. God's waiting on you. Yes, sir. He's got something for you, but he's waiting on you. You go everywhere else, but you can't come to God's house. I don't know about you, but I don't want to stand before God. He said, well, why didn't you come to my house and you had an opportunity? Well, Lord, they did this. And the Lord said, well, you was here, 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 here. Why didn't you come to my house? Heavenly Father, God, I thank you and I praise you for this word. God, I thank you for this service tonight, God, that you would move in a mighty way. God, I pray, God, that heaven would come down in glory and fill our soul. God, it's not by might nor by power, but God, it's by thy spirit, says the Lord of God. God, I thank you for what you're going to do. God, I pray, God, for those listening out there across the airway. God, if they'd open up their hearts and their minds, God, and they get in the right place where you would have them to be, God, but they've got to get off the couch. Get out of the chair, God, and get up and to do what God wants them to do. And Father, I praise you and I thank you for your many blessings, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please come back and be with us Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for church. May God bless you as our prayers.